Hello everyone, this is Rick, and welcome to Astral Club. Today's subject video will be titled, The Pineal Gland, A Spiritual Third Eye. That's by uh, Best David Attenborough. It's a little joke here in the family. I do a passable David Attenborough. You know, he's the guy who does all those nature specials, you know, like the Norwegian blue has lovely plumage. Uh, I think the guy's voice is great. Anyway, I threatened to do the whole video using that voice, and my wife pleaded with me not to do that. So she won. Okay, let's talk about, and by the way, it can be pronounced pineal or pineal, and I might pronounce it either way. They're both correct in English. I made sure I looked it up. Oh, and forgive me, there's multiple languages <laughs> that are going to pop up in this video, so I'm going to do my best to have the correct, the correct pronunciation. I'm going to be using two different source articles. Uh, the first uh, is written um, by uh, Raj Kumar, Arushi Kumar, and Jayesh Sardhara, and uh, they're both associated with the Department of Neurosurgery in uh, Uttar Pradesh in India. So these are very uh, reputable uh, men of medicine. And what I love about this, and I think it's great, one of the great things about India is not only have they progressed in, in the modern world and in modern medicine, but they still have access to thousands and thousands of years of uh, historical knowledge and customs. And it just adds a whole nother side to this subject. So uh, this article uh, addresses the whole odyssey from antiquity to modern medicine and associated with this pineal gland. So. Real briefly, what is the pineal gland? Well, the pineal gland or spiritual third eye, it's been known as, it's regarded as the gateway of spiritual life as per ancient concepts about the soul. Now, modern neuroscience has proven that the pineal gland is not only the melatonin secreting a neuroendocrine organ, which controls the circadian rhythms. That's what tells you when to get up, when to go to sleep. But it also has mystical and energetic associations with spirituality. It acts as a tremendous coordinator between uh, molecular, hormonal, physiological, and chemical rhythmic orchestra. Thus, this article uh, blends it all together. Ancient Indian metho methodology and modern medicine. Uh, and I just think it's wonderful. I know for a fact that the pineal gland is no bigger than a grain of rice. It looks kind of sandy. And in um, man's history, it has figured in the occult. Uh, in our religions. And in many cases, it's been shown as something that kind of looks like a pineapple. Uh, so let's find out more about it and its history. I can tell you that it has a deep connection with astral projection. That a healthy pineal gland or pineal gland is necessary to astral project. And we're going to talk about ways that things can go wrong, i.e. calcification, and some ways that you can reverse that process. So this is not only a subject which is of interest to anyone interested in the uh, occult and the traditions, the spiritual traditions of mankind, but also people who very much want to astral project and want to make sure that they're not being held back by a calcified uh, pineal gland. The pineal gland produces, naturally, dimethyltryptamine, or DMT, which is known as the spirit molecule. 
It's linked to perception and is activated by energetic and magnetic frequency. Now, it may sound absurd to some researchers, but the current evidence actually favors the existence of this, quote, third eye. And this article um, is an excellent way of reviewing the historical nature of this third eye, bringing it right on up to the present. Now, human beings have this third eye, and it's typically located in the center of the forehead. Uh, and it, uh, as I said, is about the size of a grain of rice. It corresponds to the sixth energy center, or chakra. In Indian, it's, uh, it's Ajna Chakra. I hope I did a decent job there. And it provides a window into the spiritual life of every individual. Hippocrates, the Greek father of modern medicine, it's his name, we get the Hippocratic Oath, which all medical people must take. He changed a concept. Um, he believed that the soul resided somewhere inside the body. Previously, people believed it resided outside the body. And I have mixed feelings about that, and we've discussed some of that in the past. However, he came up with an idea, and he said this soul is an energy-generating part that coordinates the molecular, hormonal, physiologic, and chemical orchestra of the human body. Modern neuroscience believes that the rhythmic coordination is maintained um, via the pineal gland, and thus the pineal gland has mystical and energetic associations. There was, uh, there was another uh, scientist later on whose name uh, was Galen, and he wrote in Latin, and his work was De Anatomicus Administrationibus. Gotta love that. And he believed that the soul flowed in a form of air from the lungs to the heart and then to the brain. Anyway, the flow of the air in the brain is controlled in a valve-like function or fashion by the pineal gland. Now, the importance of the pineal gland as a center of the soul reached its peak in the era of St. Thomas Aquinas. Now, he formed a council and proved his theory of the three cells. Later on, Descartes and a man named uh, Versalius, who's the father of modern anatomy, proposed that the brain was the center of the soul. In the past, people used to think the heart or the stomach was. Um, so uh, the pineal gland here served as a meeting place between the physical and the spiritual worlds. And um, the body and the spirit not only meet there, um, I guess Descartes said, but each affects the other. And the repercussion extends in both directions. So they're very much interconnected. The ancient Indians had quite a lot to say about this, partic this particular topic. And I think a lot of their knowledge is where we get a lot of our occult knowledge today. And a lot of this was probably imported by a variety of gurus and other wise men who uh, started sharing that knowledge going back to the, you know, the, the British invasion of India and then going forward. Uh, as I said, they called the third eye the Ajna Chakra. And um, it was the seat known as the brow chakra, the third eye, the eye of wisdom, the inner eye chakra, the command chakra. Uh, it's an invisible yet powerful third eye. Uh, ancient gurus have gained mystical and supernatural powers by, quote, igniting the third eye. Uh, now, of course, according to the article, there is some proof missing on this. But what I have encountered in the past are people who've had difficulties in astral projection. And I had narrowed it down to, I thought, a pineal gland problem. 
And I urge them to meditate on the third eye and to projecting energy into that area and 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 opening it up uh, from a closed state. And many times after those meditations, they said they could feel like a warm buzzing in that area. When you return from a from an astral projection, you will often have residual energy, especially in that third eye forehead area. It feels like it's buzzing. Uh, there's a sense of warmth and energy. And I think that's just um, the body interpreting um, this energy surge that, that, that just happened when you rejoined your physical body. And the pineal gland as this... I like to think of it as this tiny little nerve center that not only affects the physical body, but is also very much connected with the spiritual and astral projection. We've seen then that this pineal gland has, <laughs> despite the fact that it's no bigger than a size uh, of one grain of rice, is extraordinarily important not only to our physical well-being, but our spiritual well-being. And we have every reason to believe, based on my experience and based on the experience of others, that it can be the linchpin between successful astral projections or frustration. What are some of the things that can go wrong with the pineal gland? And what are some of the ways we can perhaps regenerate that pineal gland? Well, calcification of the pineal gland is a problem. Sometimes the pineal gland, which is not protected by the blood-brain barrier, you may have heard about that in the past. Um, you may have heard that, oh, this type of disease organism can't penetrate the blood-brain barrier. So therefore, your brain is protected. But the pineal gland is not protected by, by the blood-brain barrier. So it is subject to problems. One of those problems is calcification. You start to get spotting, calcium spots, adhering. And, um, and that can be a problem because the pineal gland receives as much blood flow, well, actually, it gets more blood flow than your kidneys, which are number two. Uh, and um, this gland is surrounded by cerebrospinal fluid. And uh, this, can, this is a tiny little area that can be subjected very easily to a, a lot of, of, of these fluids. And if they're contaminated with things like fluoride or pesticides, they can begin this process of forming crystals, which can create a hard shell around the pineal gland called calcification. Now, there's other parts of your body that can suffer from this as well, uh, but we're talking about the pineal gland here. And if this happens, not only is it going to affect your ability to astral project and your spiritual advancement and exercises, but it's going to make it unable for your body to produce melatonin. And that can cause havoc with your ability to uh, sleep at the proper uh, time. Now, what are some of the causes of pineal calcification? Well, aging. As you age, the pineal gland may calcify. Uh, another one is uh, chronic conditions. They found that people with chronic conditions like migraines or Alzheimer's or schizophrenia also have pineal gland calcification. Now, I wonder, does one cause the other? Or is it just, you know, it's like, which came first, the chicken or the egg? That's my question here. But, and perhaps they don't even know. However, they have seen that people with these severe 
chronic conditions have pineal gland calcification. So the next question might be, okay, let's say my pineal gland is becoming calcified. Is there anything that can be done to possibly rejuvenate it and decalcify it? Well, um, there are some theories and some are more certain than others. Now, the first is something that I think is fairly certain at this point, and that is fluoride. Avoid excessive fluoride. Talk with your doctor or dentist about how much fluoride you actually need. When you brush your teeth, you don't need to cover a toothbrush with toothpaste. Really, the size of a pea will get the job done. When you rinse your mouth out, rinse it out thoroughly. I'm not talking once, twice, or three times. I'm talking four or five times. Rinse it out good. Get rid of that excess fluoride. Uh, you know, uh, don't take in any more than you absolutely need. Now, many of us, including where I live, uh, has wonderful uh, community uh, organizations that have fought for fluoridation of our water supply. Um, and I'm sure they had very noble reasons. I don't subscribe to the, uh, the fringe theories that the man is out to turn off our psychic powers. It's like I tell my wife, if I, if I have a choice between human cleverness and human idiocy, nine times out of ten, human idiocy will describe a phenomena more often than human cleverness. Uh, that's been my expertise, at least. Okay, so how do we deal with this excessive fluoride? Because you have to drink water. That's all there is to it. Well, use water filters. There are a number of water filters, like, like the pure water filter. Uh, there's some other good ones, too. Make sure that they... Zero water is, is the one that I use, by the way. Make sure they filter out fluoride. You do not need fluoride in your water, okay? Brush your teeth like you should. Use a fluoride toothpaste with, you know, a little pee of it. Rinse your mouth out thoroughly, and you're going to be fine. But you don't want to be drinking water all day that's fluoridated. That's not a good idea. Next up, and there's a little bit more disagreement on this one, but EMFs, electromagnetic fields. Uh, now, they don't believe they directly contribute to calcification, but there is some research that suggests that excessive exposure may affect the pineal gland and limit its ability to produce melatonin. So stuff like your cell phone, microwaves, Wi-Fi routers, TVs, smart meters, computer screens, they're all common sources of EMFs. Try your best to limit your exposure to this stuff. Make sure your Wi-Fi router isn't immediately in your vicinity. Um, keep the TV further away. Uh, uh, make sure you're, you don't hang around and watch your food microwave like it was entertainment, for instance. Yes, you're going to use your phone. It, it's, it's like an arm or a leg today. However, use it on speaker. That's what I do. Uh, don't hold it up to your head. Uh, that's just a bad idea. Uh, so, EMFs, be wary of those. Uh, create an environment that promotes the proper functioning of the pineal gland. Get high-quality sleep every night in a dark room. One factor that affects your sleep quality is blue light. It suppresses the production of mel melatonin, when you're exposed to blue light for up to four hours. Green light, on the other hand, promotes sleep. So, 
Minimize your exposure to blue light by getting rid of the junk light in your home. It may help to get rid of the LEDs and replace them with halogen or, if you can find them, traditional incandescent bulbs. When you go to sleep, your bedroom should be as dark as possible. Do your best. I know it can be sometimes difficult in the cities and what have you. Indirect sun exposure is essential. Your eyes need indirect sunlight exposure to function correctly. Both the sun and the darkness activate the functions of the pineal gland. It has a photoreceptor that receives light signals, causing it to produce melatonin. But of course, it's funny, uh, this one particular article says, but don't look at the sun directly. So I guess it's covering its butt and I'm covering my butt now too. So you don't stare at the sun. Okay, that's the pineal gland. We talked a little bit about what it is, uh, how it functions, and how important it is in your physical health, your mental health your spiritual health, and how it's, it's necessary to have a healthy pineal gland to astral project. So, uh, if you suspect that might be the problem, then, you know, do some of these things that I just mentioned uh, to help promote the health of your pineal gland. If you liked this video, I want you to hit the like button, share it with those of like minds subscribe. I love your questions and comments. Uh, remember, I'll have a link for Patreon in the, uh, uh, in the description uh, so you can help support the channel and you get advanced videos and we can talk back and forth and there's no commercials. I'll also have a link to my private lessons. So in case you'd like to set up a private lesson with me for three hours where we can um, customize it to your precise needs and discuss your precise concerns. Uh, it can help get some people who are a little frustrated over that hump so they can begin astral projecting. And all of that uh, and those links will be available in the description. And as always, this is Rick, and I will see you on the astral plane.